consider the rotor of a turbo machine uh, which is shown here like this uh, this uh, rotates with an angular velocity omega in the clockwise direction fluid enters this rotor with an absolute velocity uh, v1 and leaves with an absolute velocity v2 the absolute velocity has components in three directions namely radial axial and tangential also known as world component uh, as the name suggests the component of velocity in the radial direction moving outwards radially from the shaft is actually referred to as the uh, radial velocity in this case as you can see it's, uh, this is the radial component of velocity in the radial direction and uh, the axial component of velocity is along the axis of the shaft from inlet to exit uh, so as you can see this is the axial velocity of uh, the fluid like this and the uh, the tangential component or world component is in a direction or circumferential direction uh, along the direction of rotation and as you can see this is the tangential component of velocity at this location see that at this uh, point Uh, this location, entry location, the tangential component of velocity uh, looks like this, and at the exit, the tangential component of velocity, because of the direction of the absolute velocity, the tangent tangential component looks like this. The tangential component is also usually referred to as the world velocity, and if we actually uh, <coughs> Uh, look at the uh, torque that is exerted on the fluid as a result of uh, the passage of the fluid it is nothing but the change in angular momentum rate of change of angular momentum of the fluid so uh, if m dot is the mass flow rate through the rotor uh, the rate of change of angular momentum of the fluid negative of that is the torque that is exerted on the rotor and that is what we have given here so the rate of change of angular momentum uh, is actually v theta 2 r2 minus v theta 1 r1 but since we are uh, trying to evaluate the torque exerted on the rotor we change the sign so this is written as m dot times v theta 1 r1 minus v theta 2 r2 it should be noted that uh, the uh, tangential component of velocity at the inlet v theta 1 is in the same direction as the blade speed in the velocity triangle that is shown in the illustration also note that uh, v theta 2 is actually in a direction opposite to the blade speed uh, at least the black colored velocity triangle shows it that way now the red colored velocity triangle shows v theta 2 to be in the same direction as the blade speed so the sign convention is that if v theta 2 is in the same direction as v theta 1 with respect to the blade speed then it is taken to be a positive number if v theta 2 is in an opposite direction to the blade speed uh, to v theta 1 with reference to the blade speed then it is taken to be a negative number so this is something that we need to take into account when we actually do calculations of uh, real uh, application now if we multiply both sides of this equation by uh, omega t times omega is nothing but the rate at which uh, work is done so or it is uh, power so we can uh, multiply both sides by omega and say that the power is equal to m dot v theta 1 omega r1 minus v theta 2 omega r2 notice that omega r1 is nothing but the blade velocity at point 1 and omega r2 is the blade velocity at point r2 or blade speed at point r2 so we can write this as m dot v theta 1 u1 minus m dot i'm sorry minus v theta 2 u2 This equation is called the Euler turbine equation, and is of fundamental importance in the theory of uh, turbo machinery. So the product uh, v theta u, or the difference between uh, the product v theta u at inlet and outlet, determines whether the machine is work producing or work absorbing. Now the sign convention uh, for the for the power or W dot here. is the same as in uh, thermodynamics which means if the right hand side comes out to be positive then the machine is a turbine the right hand side is negative then it is a compressor or pump blower etc power work comes out so it is consistent with the sign convention for thermodynamic work now one point that we notice here in passing but we will take this up in detail later 
is the Doyle turbine equation involves only fluid mechanical quantities, that namely velocities of the fluid and mass flow rate. Uh, no thermodynamic uh, properties are seen in the Euler turbine equation as it is written here. So this is something that we will develop on uh, at a uh, later point. Now the next question that naturally arises is the following. Uh, in case of uh, an actual device, let us say uh, we take a device like this. In case of an actual device, if I look at uh, let's say this uh, uh, set of blades, uh, the fluid enters the blade along the entire height of the blade and exits along the entire height of the blade. So how do we evaluate V theta 1 and V theta 2 or U1 and U2? What is it? U1 will vary along the height of the blade. V theta 1, Vx1 and Vr1 all will vary along the height of the blade. So how do we evaluate V theta 1, V theta 2, U1 and U2 in this case? Or in the case of a centrifugal machine like this, uh, V theta 1, uh, U1 and uh, the other components vary along the uh, length of the impeller. As the fluid flows through the impeller, uh, these components vary along the length of the impeller. So how do we evaluate uh, V theta 1, uh, uh, U1, V theta 2, U2? Now, for this purpose, we introduce a concept known as blade element. Now, in the case of an axial rotor like this, we uh, draw a circle at a radius r, typically the mid height of the blade. And we uh, take out an element of uh, radial thickness dr at this location. So at the mid radius, uh, we take out an element of thickness uh, dr, which would be along the entire uh, circumference. So we take it out, then we cut it open, and then uh, lay the uh, elements flat. If you do that, this is what it will look like in the case of a turbine. So we take out uh, an element of uh, radial thickness dr and remove uh, the uh, element and cut it open, then lay it down flat. This is what it would look like. If we do this for a compressor blade, for instance, then this is what uh, the uh, layout would look like. Basically, the blades are all laid out along this. So this is the uh, circumference uh, of the uh, blade, but laid out in a uh, flat manner on this surface. Now, in the case of a, a radial machine, like the centrifugal pump, what we do is we actually uh, take an axial section of thickness dx at any axial location of the impeller. So, we take an axial section along a vertical line like this of thickness dx and then we uh, lay it out like this and this would be the blade element in this case. So this would be the blade element in this case. So the pump rotates like this. So we have laid out a blade element of axial thickness dx. So the axial thickness dx in this case would be perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Similarly here, the radial thickness dr will be perpendicular to the plane of the paper in both these cases. So we can evaluate V theta 1 and U1 at the entry uh, to this blade passage and at exit to the blade passage in order to evaluate uh, the power from the Euler turbine equation. Okay. Note that one of the advantages uh, of uh, using the notion of blade element is that uh, only two components of velocity uh, are taken to be non-zero. Notice that only the axial component of velocity, which in this case is perpendicular to the tangential direction, and the angular component of velocity, which is in this direction, only these two components appear in this uh, in this flow field. So the radial component of velocity, which is perpendicular to the, perpendicular to the plane of the paper, is taken to be zero. Similarly here, the axial direction or axial component of velocity, which is perpendicular to uh, the uh, uh, the blade speed, and the uh, tangential component of velocity alone appear in this. Uh, the other component of velocity, namely the radial component, which is perpendicular to this, which is along the height of the blade, is taken to be zero. In this case also, notice that only two components of velocity, namely the radial component of velocity and the tangential component of velocity, or non-zero in a, in a blade element, the axial component of velocity, which is along the width of the blade in this case, is taken to be zero. Uh, for developing the basic theory, uh, 
this assumption is perfectly acceptable but in real life the flow will be three dimensional so many such blade elements have to be taken and uh, calculations may have to be done uh, using many such uh, blade elements okay, but uh, what is done in the basic theory is to take a blade element and assume that all blade elements develop the same power so that the analysis can be used in real life application with a great degree of accuracy uh small improvements on or any other improvement to this theory can always be made by doing three dimensional calculation for measure so this is what we uh, will do uh, when we try to evaluate the right hand side of the oil or turbo machinery equation so v theta 1 u1 v theta 2 u2 or measure with reference to this blade element now another important concept in the in the context of a blade element is the notion of the relative velocity denoted here by c so we have talked about absolute velocity of the fluid notice the capital v denotes the absolute velocity of the fluid by absolute velocity what we mean is the frame of reference where the rotor rotates and the fluid enters now relative velocity which is denoted by c is the velocity of the fluid measured in a frame of reference uh where the blade is stationary in other words uh the blade appears to be stationary and the relative velocity is the velocity measured uh in this frame of reference this is important because uh it is used for designing the shape of the blade under design operating condition so under design operating condition the relative velocity of the fluid approaching the blade is such that it glides on and off the blade surface smoothly okay which means that the relative velocity vector is tangential to the uh, blade profile at inlet and exit okay, which is why the relative velocity is very important for designing the shape of the blade okay let us take a look at this what is that the relative velocity is tangential to the uh, blade profile at inlet and at exit in these situations and also in this situation so the relative velocity of the fluid is defined like this it is the absolute velocity of the fluid minus the blade velocity at that location what is that everything is done at a particular location so an observer sitting on the rotor at this radius or on this blade element would see the fluid approaching the rotor with the velocity c okay they should actually read uh, on this blade element would see the fluid approaching the rotor or leaving the rotor with velocity c okay so uh, so if you draw the uh, uh, velocity triangle which is uh, which is a graphical illustration of uh, these three uh, velocities so you can see that velocity vector v is the sum of the relative velocity vector plus the blade speed okay? so v is equal to u plus c so you can see that the relative velocity vector uh, i'm sorry the absolute velocity vector v is the sum vector sum of the relative velocity vector c and the blade vector, blade velocity vector u in this case also the absolute velocity vector v is the sum of the relative velocity vector c and the blade velocity vector u however notice that the uh, geometry of the velocity triangle is different in this case and different in this case 